Yo, what up gamers, I'm Report Red Ark, and welcome to my Vein Guide. I'm gonna be showing you today how to play Vein. I'm gonna be starting off with Q, you always wanna do that. And so we're against Misfortune Sona, and we know they are really good at short trades, but pretty bad at longer ones, so we're probably gonna be okay with the long trades, since we have lethal tempo, so that's where we're gonna try and shoot the aim for. Oh yeah, this could be really good, if they extend it. Yep. That's what they not wanna do. Can still hold on to my heal here because they don't have ignite. Alright, beautiful. Didn't get baited into trying to kill me because I'm still holding on to the heal, unfortunately, but. That's alright. Like really a good trade. We did much more damage onto them overall. So as low as well as this. Um, misfortune. So even though we didn't have the W there, still really good in those extended trades thanks to the lethal tempo. So much so that I could afford to go into their wave. Okay. That was a mistake. Look at this wave state. That was not worth dying for. I need John to shove this fast. Oh my god, she's not shoving fast at all. Is this really the fastest you can shove, woman? Oh man, she failed and she needs to run now. I don't know if she could have actually crashed it, but damn, she could have tried better than that. My god. She should be okay here. <coughs> Wait, what the fuck? Why is she running over there? Okay. Still okay, though. Oh, shit. Wait, this could be a kill for me. Alright, cool. The... Belveth just made the same mistake I did. Flash for kill that was not worth killing. Only because she knew that the, uh, only because she didn't know that I was there though, to be fair. She would have been fine if I wasn't there. Yeah, I'm not gonna do too well in these uh, 1v2 trades though. I got uh, refillable for healing at least. But anyway, yeah, we're playing Vayne here, who is a hyper carry, maybe the best scaling ADC in the game. I mean, it's kind of situational, really, like what scaling is better than uh, others. So in some situations, um, I mean, an ADC like Jinx can do more damage in a teamfight than Vayne. But Vayne is definitely going to be the highest damage ADC uh, in terms of single target damage, dealing damage to a single target, and definitely towards tanks in particular, which is going to be by far the best. Resmus Fortune, I would say definitely more of a mid-game ADC. And definitely has a better early game than Vayne, so the fact that we're doing okay so far in the lane is already a really good sign. Meanwhile though, Sonel also has really good scaling. Uh, probably on par with Vayne. She's like one of the hardest scaling supports in the support role. But, you know, that's just support. Okay, we see Belvath, we wanna back off here. Or actually Oh, what is Jana doing? I'm just gonna try and help uh Rexai here. Jana's just baiting, I guess. Um Could try and go for Belvath and then the misfortune, but then I might end up getting neither, so we'll just focus the misfortune and let Belveth live. I don't know what the hell happened to Jana. What how does she end up in, like, melee range of Misfortune and Sona? That was so weird. Oh crap, I really should have targeted that cannon. Nice. We'll just get this plating and leave. Nice one. Um... Yeah, actually, I can't base quite in front of Misfortune, because she'll just cancel it with E. <coughs> so this is 12.17, the patch where Misfortune is really, really busted. Probably should start banning her if I'm not going to play her. Okay, we get a really good base here. Getting the Berserkers, which is really nice on Vayne. Because all, all, literally all you do is auto-attack, so being able to get in range to auto-attack and stay in range of auto-attacks is really important. So the movement speed is really nice. And the Vamp Scepter is just going to be quite nice to just have the sustain. Since we're going into Shield Bow anyway, uh, Vamp Scepter is like one of the strongest landing components you could possibly get. 
I would prioritize that over the Berserkers, uh, but since I can get both at once, that's really nice. So generally on Vayne, usually you'd want to stick to shorter trades. A lot of the time, you can go for like 3 procs on your W, it's not even worth it because you'd have to overextend too hard. Problem, problem is in a matchup like this, uh, they definitely also want really short trades. Because Misfortune can just trade really hard with a, uh, like auto attack, Q auto attack, get the PTA proc. And just beat pretty much anything that I could put out. So, I excel in the, in the longer trades here. I don't necessarily beat her in a 3 auto attack trade. But when my lethal tempo starts to kick in, that's when I really shine. There we go. The extra range also definitely doesn't hurt. And you see, I can afford to take a lot of damage here because I've not only got the refillable but also the vamp scepter. So I can recover really nicely from these trades. Misfortune is not going for the vamp scepter. She does have Son of Force sustain, but overall I should probably be able to recover from these from these trades more easily than her essence. Son of healing in the early game is not amazing. Like I said, very hard skilling champion Sona. In the early game, the heal is uh, very weak. It's on a high cooldown and costs a lot of mana. It's not really on the same level as like Yumi or Soraka or even Nami. Okay, this could be a very nice dive. I'll just go ahead and take aggro. Oh crap, that's fine. Yeah, but by taking aggro though, uh, I can very easily escape the turret range while still plotting out damage. I actually think it was a lot better for me to take aggro there than Rek'Sai. Usually you would think the opposite, but Rek'Sai is not really that tanky at this stage of the game. So you don't want turret taking aggro, because she would have to take aggro and then just immediately back out without really dealing damage, right? I need to get this cannon, actually. I don't need to, but I would very much like to. There we go. Then I can help with this Drake. We can also just leave that wave pushing towards us. It's in a good spot. I just need to base and get back into lane before they have a chance to crash that. Probably should have started basing already, actually. <coughs> yeah, Misfortune is already in lane. Damn. I might just end up missing some farm there. Hmm. So I could go Crit Cloak there, but I'm just going to try Double Dagger, because uh, I like Attack Speed on Vayne, it's really nice. Definitely feels a lot better than Crit Cloak, only disadvantage is... Uh, obviously, if these daggers don't actually build into the Shield Bow, so... We sh we really have to hope that we base on more than 1200 gold here, or just about 1200 gold. It's fine too. If you don't, then it's going to be really awkward that I didn't buy that Crit Cloak. But for sure, this is a better power spike for now. To be fair though, like, because it's just not guaranteed to pay off, I would always just advise going for the Crit Cloak. Probably made the wrong move in buying these daggers, but you'll never know. It might actually pay off. It's just, uh, completely random. Since you never know how these things will play out in advance. Oh crap. There we go. Okay, I have to back off from Belveth here. It's a shame that I already used D. Okay, she missed the knockup though, that's really good. I'm just gonna start fighting here. So then there's no bolt. Oh my god, there's also Salas here. Crashed into the wall. Alright, nice one. Holy crap, I nearly died to the burn there. I don't think Salas is vision of me. Ah crap, but he still hit me. Cast on my Q too, although I think I was dead either way. Okay, that could have gone worse. <coughs> for a 3v4, that was not bad. I think I should have just continued focusing Belveth at the very start instead of switching aggro onto Misfortune. I could have just kept diving onto Belveth and then just uh, won the fight, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, you see, and because I didn't predict in advance that I would get ganked by four people, now I just can't get the shield bow because I don't want to sell both of my daggers. That'd be a huge waste of gold. Selling one dagger would be fine, but both? I don't think so. So yeah, we did just delay getting shield buff for no reason. Didn't pay off. But oh well. 
We're definitely still a lot stronger than the 2v2 at least. What the hell, Silas? Greedy? <clears throat> like, I mean, even if he does kill Janna there, it's not worth. Because Janna doesn't need to be alive to farm. She's a support, she doesn't care if she's not farming. But Salas does care about farm. If he was killing me, then it would be a different matter. Still probably not worth, but a little bit more. No, I can base for shield ball already. Or I could also just cheese Misfortune here actually, since her support is mid. She'll never see this coming. Okay, I think she might be seeing this coming, but if we play a patient Eventually she'll just assume okay surely Vayne must be in base, right? Oh, Janna might make it obvious now though. No, okay. She's wandering off. That's good Oh There we go one auto before the E And that's just an easy kill perfect Slow and steady wins the game I was really stupid of her, honestly, not to check with E. Like, I get that I waited so long that she started to be relatively confident that I wasn't there, but you still gotta be- you still gotta check just to be safe. If she used D, she probably would not have died there. <coughs> I would've put out some damage, but I said I wasn't gonna kill her there unless I could stun her against the wall. So we're gonna go for the shield bow now. Sorry, not shield bow, uh, Ginsus. Definitely the best second item you can get on Vayne. Just does so much damage. When combined with the W. And obviously, we're maxing the W. Q max Vayne hasn't be really been a thing in years. It used to be a thing back when I started playing League, but it has been a while since it was viable. You just wanna max it second. These days, it's just more about the mobility, whereas back in the day, it used to give a lot more damage, and, uh... Actually, the cooldown got was, like, a lot longer in lower levels, too, unless you maxed it. Since there's not as much benefit to maxing it anymore, you just want to max W for the damage. Ow. <coughs> Again, though, we got life still, we should be able to recover from this nicely. I just want to go for golems here to lifesteal, because, uh, might be getting ganked. Yep. This is working really nicely. So at this stage of the game, you can, do, if you have, if you have, like, a vamp scepter for sustain, then you can just go do golems for some lifesteal. Um, doesn't really work until, like, you know, this stage of the game. In particular, even early on, if you have Vimes up on like first or second base, uh, the golems still do a lot of damage compared to how much you life steal. But it's pretty free sustain at this stage. Red side in comparison has it pretty nice because the Gromp is actually such a good source of healing, even if you don't have life steal. Let's try and uh, rotate over here and see if we can do something. Okay, that's all. Dead. Wait, really? I ulted for nothing. My bad. Yeah, zero chance to catch her, I think. Or maybe... No, I have to go... I'm just gonna go here and defend the turret. Need to kill these minions as soon as possible, so they hopefully don't get the turret. There we go. Okay, I got Ginsu's whenever I base. <coughs> Yeah, John is also pretty good support for Vayne. Uh, Generally, she performs a lot better with Enchanters, and John is probably one of the best, I would say, just because the peeling power is so good for Vayne. Oh, crap. Okay, that was unexpected. That was a... Uh, it was pretty good to just flash out there so fast, I think. Some nice reaction time there. Before Silas could use the E. Seriously though, what are the odds? Why was Silas just waiting there and Shen was so fast on the ult too? Who even saw that dive coming, man? Oh crap.
Okay, we're getting a Tiafolt. He ulted into such a bad spot, though. I'm gonna stun the Salas here, so we can hopefully finish him off. There we go. Yep. Oh. Okay. Two kills, not bad. And that's the turret. Just gonna go, gonna go ahead and base already, I think. Yeah, there's no Grump to take. That was the only thing I was considering staying for. Yeah, we'll do the Phantom Dancer third here. Your other option mainly is Wits and third item. If the enemies have a lot of magic damage, they pretty much just only have the Silas, I would say. And he's not really much of a threat, so I'm just going to go Phantom Dancer, which just gives the most damage. Uh, def well, at least relative to the cost. It's definitely the quickest and best power spike you can get as a whole, if you don't need DMR. Are they doing Herald? Nope, there's no Herald. So we'll just shove this mid wave first before anything else, then we can consider a rotation. Okay, could be a fight. Really? Could probably do with getting QSS at one point. Okay, nice. Crucial juke on the Bulbeth knockup. Okay, we can definitely do a lot of damage here. Putting out as much damage as they can here before they fully back off into the turret. Yeah, that was a risky start to the fight. Oh. oh. Okay, I think I got two flashes there. That wasn't too bad. Hmm. Probably shouldn't have uh, <laughs> tried so hard to hit Sona there, but... Yeah, if Shen dies, then it's not too bad. Man, this fight is just never gonna end. Okay, so as a whole, probably didn't pay off, but uh, the, fight, the start of the fight was uh, kind of risky. But definitely did pay off big. Uh, it's always a risk to put yourself in a position where if you get hit by a knockup, then you're just pretty much going to die or take a lot of damage. But because we did manage to dodge the Belveth knockup, um, we were able to put out a lot of damage onto Belveth and also like bait their team uh, to walk into an aggressive position where my team could just engage onto them after that. Just ended up resulting in a really good fight for us. Generally, the more risk you're willing to take, the harder you're going to be able to carry games. Yoga. Also, gotta be confident that the risk you're taking is also like a level of risk that you're capable of dealing with. You know, no sense in taking constant risks where you're just always dying. You gotta adjust to like your own level of capability, I guess. Okay, so I can already base for the Phantom Dancer. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It'll be a pretty decent power spike. Alright, we'll head over for this red buff for before anything else. And yeah, we'll get that QSS next, because the Sona ult... That, like, the, the way that I want to play this game should be really aggressive. I can definitely get away with that. The only thing that could be complicated is the Sona ult, because it's really hard to dodge it. But if I get a QSS, then it'll just enable me to play a lot more aggressively. We'll just start off with the Golems here as well, by the way, because TF is already farming mid. So afterwards, I would like... After, like, alongside red, I would also like to... 
uh, farm golems. And it, it just makes makes more sense to start off with the golems and then go for the red. Rather than starting with the red and then going to the golems, which is like in the opposite direction of mid lane. So you're going the wrong way, pretty much. And mid lane is where we want to end up. So by starting with the golems, we move up to red buff and move up to mid lane. Right order. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit risky. Not even worth the risk, but it paid off, I guess. Um, this is all right. We'll just go for the next mid wave again here. What is Balveth doing? Okay, this ult probably was actually not worth using, but at least we get the Silas. We'll just see what else I can do. Yeah, okay, that time I was fairly confident that they wouldn't get me if I hit Sona. Yeah, we can do the Baron. I'm just gonna head straight towards there. I'll skip the rest of the wave, it's not important. What the hell? Alright, I guess we're fighting. See, right on me, man. Why? Okay, nice interrupt on the Misfortune ult. We'll start off with her, move on to Shen. <coughs> we'll finish off Shen before turning on to Sona. I'll flash through here. There's pretty much no way this could turn ugly for me. Could maybe get the Belveth here? Maybe a Penta? Fuck, I probably should have just gone around. No chance it would be a Penta then, but... Because I just wouldn't be able to kill her in time. But at least I would have been pretty certain that I would kill her. Yeah, at least she does die. Damn, I didn't peel him off of John in time. Oh well. Decent fight. Uh, in theory we could maybe still do Baron. But... I'm not entirely sure because of Rek'Sai's HP, so I'm just gonna play it safe and steal their camps. Okay, nice. Red is up. Perfect. Oh, crap. Who is that? Oh, that's just Sona. That's fine. Perfect. Can already base. Could base ages ago. I wouldn't be able to kill her. There's just no point canceling my base there. We'll just wait 20 gold for Mercurial Scimitar here. Usually I wouldn't completely finish the Mercurial Scimitar. Uh, usually it's just better to leave it at QSS and then complete your next power spike. But I think next item I'm just going to do GA. I think GA will probably be my best choice since my damage is fine. And since GA doesn't actually build out of any crit, um, the most damage I can deal right now is by finishing the Mercurial Scimitar. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. If I didn't finish uh, Mercurial Scimitar, all I could get a stopwatch and then all I could do is finish GA, which isn't that much damage. Okay, Balveth. Could have kissed us that faster, my bad. Just gonna focus on finishing off Balveth if possible. Okay, nice. Perfect. Yeah, I should have turned on to Balveth faster because I could hit her even through the wall. And Shen wasn't going anywhere. I could. I, I also didn't have to like care about him damaging me because just there's such little damage and I life still so much at the moment. Even a John appealing me and everything. Yes, a lot of the time when you go QSS, it doesn't even have to be about safety. It's also about, it's also a really good aggressive tool. You can just use it to deal more damage by ending a CC early, even if you weren't going to die during that CC. 
Just ensures that nothing can stop you in your tracks from killing the enemy team. Which is why I definitely could have kissed Hestel a lot sooner than it would have uh, definitely allowed me to do a lot more damage. Because I wasn't expecting the ult through the wall when I did not vision of Sona. Just gonna base now. Gonna get the... I could get either BF Sword or... Stopwatch. I'm gonna go Stopwatch because my damage is more than fine. I'm completely melting them. I, I mean, that's just how it is when you play Vayne. So I'm gonna get Stopwatch just in case I can find myself in a bad spot. Then I can hopefully get out of that with the Stopwatch. Prevent a lot of damage. Well, Beth getting cut out again. Damn, just barely didn't kill steel. I guess we'll push top here. Doesn't really matter where we push, honestly. I think bot or top are both fine, but uh, we're just closer to top lane at the moment. She's probably not alone there. Yeah, there's the Shen. Again, I could have been faster on that reaction, but oh well. Oh, come on, are they both just flashing away? Oh my god. Okay. Nice one. I'm already back to full HP, pretty much. need the stopwatch. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, gamers.